Welcome to the Holt Naylor Show, episode 16, I believe, getting close to episode 20. On the other side, New Texas A&M commit, Shane Calhoun, former teammate, former East Carolina Pirate. Thank you to Southern East for sponsoring the show. Hope you enjoy the show. If not, as always. Holt Naylor turns, and Holt will take off and run himself. He's at the 40-yard line. Holt Naylor's to the 30. Look at him go. 20, 10, 5. Touchdown, Pirates. There's local politics, bud. It's showtime. Welcome back into the Holt Naylor Show brought to you by Southern Ease. What are you waiting for? Experience the many wellness benefits of Southern Ease tasty hemp edibles by going to southernease.com. Use code CAPITAL PIRATE for 25% off your order. What a deal. We're going to have to send some to Jack when he goes to Colorado. You thought that was funny, didn't you? <laughs> that was a good one. Hey, let's yeah, welcome in one of the best teammates I've ever had. One of the boys had a touchdown on the Birmingham Bowl. So he's in the history books. Uh, and that is Shane Calhoun. Shane, welcome in, brother. I appreciate y'all having Let's me. Let's go, Shane. Let's go. Dude, let's dive right into it. Obviously, the decision to transfer, um, you've already found a new home. We'll get into that kind of later in the show. But um, what went into it? You know, obviously, you were here four years. You graduated. You're a true pirate. I don't care what people say, which you've, you've got a lot of positive feedback, really, from pirate fans and from teammates. Um, but kind of what went into that decision to, you know, go find a new home? Um, you know, after being at ECU for four years and going into my last year of eligibility, um, I really just wanted a place that I felt like um, could help me reach my goals um, a little bit better. I feel like, you know, being here at ECU, there's been times where I've been utilized, but not necessarily utilized the way I'd like to be. Um, so I felt like I had to make a decision for myself. So that's basically the, the thing that went into it. I looked at, you know, the spring and, and going through watching the tight ends that went in the spring. Tyler Savage, Casey Kelly, and, and looking back on the tight ends that they've had, you know, in the system at Ole Miss, and I felt like um, I could get another opportunity to better myself somewhere else. Respect. I mean, that's that's real. I mean, you put in your time here, you graduated, you're going to have a degree from here, and, I mean, you you helped us put us back on the map at least a couple years ago in your younger years, and then obviously last year didn't go as planned. How much did – last year's non-success go into it because i mean i like losing's not fun like winning is right. fun obviously and you can make losing fun but how much did losing go into it um yeah uh it went into it a little bit i wouldn't say it went into it a ton but obviously you know everyone has dreams and aspirations for themselves and you know with football um individual goals come after team goals so um it definitely i, I thought about it but i wouldn't say it was a huge factor in my decision making I feel it. Jack, what do you got? Yeah, so, I mean, obviously we know, um, and, and just being friends, obviously I've, I've heard from you, but for the listeners out here that don't know, um, kind of give us a rundown of, of what it was like after you went in the portal. Um, you know, you we were hanging out a few moments after you went in, and your phone's just blowing up. Like, you had to go up and answer all those calls. Um, talk about who was reaching out early. Um, did it surprise you and, and kind of how it led to an early visit that weekend at A&M? Um, I, I won't say it necessarily surprised me. I definitely knew people would have interest in me going into that portal and, and making that decision. Um, but I didn't necessarily ha know how fast it was going to move for me and how much interest I would get. So I remember going into the portal, you know, I had to walk downstairs to get my transcripts and academics. And, you know, I looked down at my phone, I already had five text messages within you know, five minutes of being in the portal from different schools. So, right. Um, it was kind of crazy. Definitely some schools reached out quick. Uh, Duke reached out quick. Houston reached out quick. Um, Texas A&M reached out quick and all showed, you know, a lot of interest in me super early. And so then you kind of built that relationship as fast as you could um, and ultimately decided to take a visit that weekend to A&M, right? Right. Just three days after going to the portal, mm -hmm. something like that? Yeah. And how's was obviously the visit went extremely well and, and now you recently just committed um talk a little bit about the visit uh i mean the visit was awesome i'd already you know built some relationships over at texas a&m through you know connections here from ecu um Devontae mackey online ga is over at texas a&m now uh brandon stagall assistant strength coach is over there at texas a&m and he used to work for big john here at ecu right um as well as the recruiting staff uh, kayla Derrick, and allen I um, used to work here in 2021 in the recruiting stairs uh, building. So, you know, I'd already had some relationships built. So it made, you know, the transition pretty easy for me. Yeah, that's awesome. 
Yeah, I was I was looking at you, Shane, when on Twitter, and after you said you're on the portal, tons of schools reaching out. I saw you tweet it, and I was like, dang, like, dang, Shane's getting that attention, which you deserve. Uh, but it was it was impressive seeing some of those big schools and seeing a guy like you played with, you know, getting a, uh, some recognition they finally deserve. What were some of the schools outside of A&M? I know you chose A&M, but where else were you looking? Was it Duke? Was it Houston? I know you mentioned um, those two. Any other ones? Uh, Houston and USF were both super interested in me. You know, I sat down with both their coaching staffs and had um, some decisions I had to make, whether that was, you know, whether I liked the scheme or not. Um, Cal Berkeley came in late. Oregon State came in late. Um, two bigger schools I was also interested in. So um, when it came down to it, I just made the best decision I felt like for myself. And, you know, I appreciate those other schools giving me some interest as well. Yeah, no doubt. I'm curious, I know the SEC culture is crazy. I know Texas A&M, they're known as a cult cult like school well, yeah. so yeah. what what are you looking forward to is it the, the 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 shouting out guys they have i forget what they call them but yeah, the yell some, leaders the yell leaders they're like looking forward to that uh -huh. <laughs> um yeah i'm definitely excited to see that um obviously everyone says in the sec it means more um i just want to see and i'm excited to see you know the fan base the atmosphere um and obviously be able to play on you know the biggest stage in football college wise so i'm super excited about it Super yeah. excited. We were, we were talking before the show, and he's playing uh, in your backyard right now, holding that AT and T Stadium versus Arkansas, right? Yeah, he yeah. is. That'll be uh, that'll be crazy. We are have to get the boys there, Jack. Sure. Uh, I don't know if y'all can see me. I don't know if we got the TV set up yet, but I, I do notice the lights are on you right now, Jack. You've been saying you've been going to these baseball games and stuff. I see no tan on you. <laughs> I see no tan. What's yeah, going on? Uh, I'm pretty Irish. I just. See that. <laughs> It's either red or white here. There's, there's not really in between. So uh. I thought, I thought Jack had a little bit of sun from Y angle. I think he did. Thank you. Kevin. Nice tan going. Thank you. He does have the sun. Uh, maybe tan maybe it's the angle. Oh, maybe it's the angle. I'm making progress. Shane, Shane can, how? Or let, let me go. You can hold, just interrupt each other. You can go Sorry. first. <laughs> um, how hard was it to leave ECU? Obviously, you have a lot of history here. Like you, you did a lot of things. You were a part of some really, you know, changing of culture. Um, you came in with Houston. Big John talked about you last week about, you know, he was saying you were one of the best athletes, one of the best weight room guys he's ever had. How hard was it for you to leave ECU? Um, it was super difficult for me, you know, coming in the 2020 class, at, you know, high school and being coach Houston's first recruiting class that he, you know, had his hands in. Um, it's definitely hard for me. Um, you know, the brothers that I made coming in, you know, I obviously will cherish those relationships. And, I, you know, I'll still talk to those guys every day. Um, but it was definitely hard just leaving, you know, the relationships that I built, the memories that we built here. I definitely felt like um, my class, for one, and, and me and as an individual have made an impact on ECU and, you know, bringing this team back to um, some success. So it was super difficult. I had some, you know, tough uh, conversations, you know, upstairs in the office, talking to the coaching staff. So um, I'm just ready to keep going at this point. For sure. What do y'all have for him? Shane, so we've we've all been in this uh, kind of situation um, on one side or the other. Um, but I want to know kind of what your initial reaction was to the, the new coaching staff at ECU bringing in another kind of veteran tight end um, and if that impacted your decision. decision. Um, obviously I, I know you and, and we've interacted and we've actually done a podcast with football with Casey, um, the transfer that they brought in. I know there's no animosity between you guys, it's just the nature of the business. Right. Uh, but I want to know like if that impacted your decision and, and kind of what was your reaction to that? No, I definitely wouldn't say it impacted my decision. Um, you know, I've been a guy that's kind of been established here, so it didn't really bother me. Um, then bringing in another guy, um, obviously especially for tight end, you need to have guys that are experienced and have some time playing tight end is a, a position that gets banged up a lot. So I understood the move. And, you know, in the college football landscape, it's it's normal for, you know, the coaches to have to bring in extra guys. So it definitely didn't factor into my decision making. Nice. I'm curious for the for the listeners, you know, you, you, you've you spent a whole spring with a new offense. What's this offense like compared to last year's offense? Do you feel the momentum shifting? I know the spring game, everyone kind of saw it firsthand for the mm -hmm. first time. But how, how is it for you from last year to this year? Uh, this offense is definitely, number one, is fast. Uh, the tempo between last year's offense and this year's offense has been night and day, um, just with the the speed of the pace of play. Um, it's also very explosive. There's a bunch of big plays that are going to happen and, and did happen during the spring. So um, I would say that's the biggest difference. Obviously, another difference is with a new staff, there's new verbiage, um, new things that you have to learn, you know, the in and outs of the system. But 
um, they've kind of simplified the offense a little bit. It makes it a lot easier to learn. You know, there's one word and two word calls. So, you know, everyone can play fast, which is what, you know, they hang their hat on. Yeah. How is the players, especially veteran players, meshing with the new staff? I know sometimes me and Holt were on a, we went through that situation when we were freshmen and sophomores, mm-hmm. and that was kind of awkward for a minute. But how is it for the offense with the new staff and the veteran players? Is that kind of a good mesh there, or do you see any anything there? I would say it's definitely a little bit awkward at first just because you're having to learn um, new people over again. But, you know, at least in my class, um, this isn't the first time it's happened. I know me personally, I've had three, four different position coaches. So being an older guy and having to go through that, it makes the transition not too difficult to just learn a new player, um, learn a new person and, you know, be able to interact with him and, and, you know, go towards the same goal. Yeah, no doubt. I got, Hold on, I don't know if you want to take this one, but I might ask Shit. it. You, you can go. What are you going to ask? I don't know what you're going to ask. I'm going to ask Shane, <laughs> I'm going to ask Shane the hard question okay. that I think everyone wants to hear. Uh, you played the whole spring well, with yeah, them. Yeah, you go ahead, and then if yeah. not, I'll ask another one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You played the whole spring with them. I think we're all dying inside Pirate Nation, mm-hmm. you know, the quarterback battle. One, how competitive is it from one to competitive, 10 being competitive? And then, you know, where are you seeing? How competitive is it? And uh, how are the guys reacting to them? Um, the guys are, are interacting with them and reacting to them in a great way. I think, you know, both of them bring different things, but it's been a super competitive battle. Um, to answer your question, I would say eight or nine on the competitive scale. Okay. Um, the guys been going back and forth, making plays. They have their ups and downs. So it's been exciting to watch. And I feel like people are excited to get some new faces in that room and to help make plays. So everyone's, you know, working in the same direction they're they're excited about the both of them that's awesome yeah i mean that was a great question i was gonna ask too because i mean obviously we had kate on before i haven't met jake garcia yet i mean i've heard he's been balling out too though um shane do you think one of them has a lead right now we're, we're hearing like when we started the show like my main thing was like when i played when we all played we were behind a pedestal and you had to say the politically correct answer like you're not on the team anymore now. So your right. opinion, you can just say it. You don't have anything like that. Like, do, do you think there is a guy leading that competition right now going into Falcon? Do you think there's a guy a little bit ahead? Like, it's his job to lose. Like, because I got a feeling it's Kate Hauser's job to lose, but Jake Garcia can win it. But what are you like? You're not on the team anymore. What is yeah. your honest opinion about it? Honest opinion, I feel like um, because Caden was the first quarterback that they brought in, I feel like he kind of gets um, a step up just because um, not necessarily he's given a pedestal, but people view him differently than they view Jake because Jake was the second quarterback that they brought in. I feel like, like I said earlier, both the guys can make plays and you know, being able to see it firsthand, both of them can be the guy. So I wouldn't say anyone has the upper hand. Maybe, you know, people view the two guys differently because of, you know, when they were recruited and when they came in. But in terms of on-the-field play, both of them can do it. And I've seen it firsthand. I don't know if there's a guy leading the competition right now. Yeah. No, I feel that. And I, that was kind of the same instance. That I, like, I felt from what I've heard and what I've seen from social media and stuff and then just knowing guys like you and then other guys and coaches, obviously, is – he Caton's going to have the first crack at it, but it's anyone's job is kind of the the feeling that I had of it. So I want to get your opinion on that. Jack, what do you have? On? I want to I got a little off football question for you um, in case any of our A&M fans out there are listening, trying to get to know you a little bit, a little bit better. Uh, I want to know your go to favorite cheat meal here and what you're looking forward to in Texas, because you lived in Texas for a little while when you were growing up. Right. Um, so you're familiar with the the restaurant game out there. I want to know your cheat meal here and your cheat meal out there. Uh, cheat meal here. Um, there's a couple of places I like to go here. I like to go to La Ranch. Um, I know a place that you have, me and you have been, uh, El Azador. Oh, yeah. El Azador. Kind of street food. Where's that uh, at? It's across the street from Target, across the street from Chick fil A. That little uh, shopping center. Okay, I've never been there. Yeah, it's kind of, kind, of, kind of a little hole in the wall place. I wouldn't, I don't know if I call it hole in the wall, but really good food. Um, so I'd say, you know, me and Jack have been there and, and just went Burrito crazy. Burrito tacos. Went absolutely crazy. Um, in Texas, I would have to say living there, I'm excited to just get back to some, you know, some more good food. I'm a food person. So the coaching staff told me that every Sunday, HEB, the grocery store up there, does a crawfish boil. Mm. Mm. So they will, oh, be, Lord. they will be learning my name very quickly. Yeah. There, so. <laughs> do we, do we have any routine. of the, the yeah. sides with this boy, the crawfish boil? Any, do you know any of those? I mean, a crawfish boil is a crawfish boil. All you need is crawfish, corn, potatoes, and sausage. And you oh, it's like a uh, – Like yeah. what's it called? 
when you lay it out on the paper, it's like called secret. a crawfish bowl. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> crawfish. No, I know, but it, like, <laughs> all right, forget it. I'm gonna jump off the this one. But, yeah. <laughs> Kate, what do you have? Yeah, well, I was. Well, I just threw myself completely off. I sound like an idiot there, but um, <laughs> you know what's you, we all everyone knows you on the team as a funny guy. Mm-hmm. I, I always remember you as a funny guy. Just you know, you got any good jokes for the fans listening, or any good memories from Big John? So. uh I don't got a joke for you, but I do have a scenario. Not even a scenario. This is this is a true story. Mm, um, I know where you're going with this one. We're not going to name any names, <laughs> but there was an instance. Name it. <laughs> there, there was an instance down in, in uh, Provo, Utah, mm. for you know when we were <laughs> the BYU Cougars. Mm. And uh, like I said, I'm not going to name names, but obviously, you know, I sprained my game. ankle. <laughs> <laughs> don't don't even say the position. Yeah, yeah. Just he's he's a he's a crucial part of the unit. Crucial part of the field goal unit. Um, <laughs> That's three people right there. Yeah, yeah. So you, know, <laughs> you guys can narrow it down to who made the <laughs> who was in the three that um, operated for the game winning kick. But one of these people um, decided to do a backflip cartwheel. Um, <laughs> if you know, you know. But everyone's rushing the field after we win the game and. You know, everyone's super excited. You just look down, you see a you know a pile of people, and you're like, oh, "What's going on?" Like everyone's supposed to be jumping up excited, and this dude's laying on the ground like he's hurt, screaming bloody murder, screaming in pain. Um, like I said, not gonna name names again, <laughs> but um, <laughs> it was a funny story. Uh, Ryan Stubblefield, quarterback, used to play for us uh, here. Cooked him on the plane, gave him hell on the plane mm. for a uh, long plane ride for my boy. And then he went straight from that Sunday morning lift with Big John. Big John went right back at him again. And, uh, <laughs> it wasn't it wasn't the best scenario. Uh, some feelings got hurt. I think but, he uh, walked out. Yeah, because we have like Sunday recaps in the weight room the the day after games before we start lifting. Like, kind of talks about it, and then moves on into what we're gonna do that day and throughout the week. Um, and he gives a little story time sometimes. And yeah, he was the subject of that that matter. Big John, just let him walk out like that. Yeah, I mean, I mean, he was, got him back in there, but yeah, he, he needed a vent. They were good vibes after yeah. after winning. There's good vibes and For like sure. pretty it much. A, it's a Friday or Thursday game, right? Too, or mm-hmm. did we have a, we had a yeah. buy after or something? Yeah. That was Halloween. Yeah, weekend too. Yeah, great vibes. Yeah, it was. But yeah, after after wins, Big John would say story time. He'd just pretty much fry on people if he could. So, uh, <laughs> homeboy was just getting fried on and was not yeah, happy man. about it. Not at um, all. I just want to give you a chance, Shane, to. This will kind of be your last podcast, we'll say, kind of as a pirate. I mean, you'll always be a pirate, but as a pirate player, like, I mean, obviously you're with A&M now. What do you want to say to ECU, to your coaches, teammates, or former coaches, former teammates, and then also the fans? Like, I just want to give you the kind of platform to uh, sign off as a pirate. Oh, man. Um, My time at ECU has been amazing. You know, I've developed relationships over the the course of my four years here. Um, I'm graduating as a pirate here in the next couple weeks. Um, I'll always be a pirate. You know, I thank Coach Houston and the staff for bringing me in, recruiting a kid out of high school from, from Jacksonville, Florida, and, and giving me the opportunity to play college ball. So, you know, I appreciate him and the coaching staff, you know, past or present, and I appreciate the fan base for welcoming me in. So that's what I got. Real. He's a freaking great pirate, in my opinion, in all of our opinions. Big John said it a week ago. Caden, Jack, y'all got anything else before we let him go? Go Pirates and gig them. Funny Go Pirates and gig them. You get, did he, one, did, last thing, did you get any hate comment when you entered the portal? And have you ever got like something that just cracked you up, hate comments over the, the past four years um, here? I don't think there was too much negative. There wasn't too much negative drawback, I guess, from entering the portal. Obviously, some people have their opinions. There's always going to be people with negative opinions. So I didn't get too much of that. Um, I did see some. Um, but I guess – hate comment the best thing i got not the best thing but the best one that i've gotten i know uh 2021 i fumbled here at home against usf and i'm scrolling through instagram after the game and i'm like people are commenting under my phone like you know we want you to die kill yourself stuff like that I'm like, oh this is terrible these guys are ridiculous yeah. like dude i remember section, that play yeah that play was trey left 62 attack we put it in that week i remember yeah. that play yeah yeah mm. Drop the rock, you drop in cash. I dropped the ball. I, had, I, I guess I had to bring down the moment. But hey, I don't know if you mentioned this when we first started, Holton, but first guest in the studio. That's pretty awesome. First guest in the studio. A real one. Let's go, yes. Drew. 
What a great guy to have, first guest too. For sure. Yeah, I appreciate you. Yeah, what a greatest teammate. Big John even said it. So hey, we appreciate you, brother. Go kill it in Texas. We're gonna come out and watch you. Uh, thanks for good. coming on. Yeah. And cool uh, for you, dude. With that said, I'd like to take this time to give a shout out to our sponsor, Anson Belts. These guys are reliable. Um, not to throw a shot at you, Shane, but they will never leave the pirate side. Uh, <laughs> and they'll never fumble. No. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, and they, they will that never fumble either. Um, no, I've got mine on right now, though, actually. I've got the pirate belt. Um, but, yeah, shout out Anson Belts. Do a lot for the, the university and, and the athletic departments and some great people. So go check out their, uh, their whole list belts. AnsonBelt.com, 10,000 combinations. You can mix and match. Uh, summer's coming around. Tighten that thing up, boys. We're, uh, we're getting the summer buys ready. So shout out to Anson Belt. Shout out to Shane Calhoun for joining the show. Appreciate um, that, Yes, sir. What a G, dude. I really appreciate him going on. We, we talked about it kind of off air, but a lot of people enter the portal and are scared to, like, face their old school. Shane walks into Pirate Radio, which is where our studio is, and talks to directly to Pirate Nation, our listeners, which is – 90 percent of our listeners so shout out to him that was very real with him uh caden drew what are y'all's takeaways of it yeah i had three takeaways uh well one before i get into my three takeaways was you know shane's a great guy when the one of the best teammates we've had funniest teammates in the locker room i've always been a big fan of shane's but outside of shane's talk and we wish him the best he's gonna you know hopefully do great things in a&m I think three things stuck out to me was one, the quarterback battle and the competition. He mentioned how it was an eight out of the, the one to competition scale. It was an eight, which is great to hear. Uh, you know, I think we all, you know, everyone got a little taste of the spring game. Um, you know, who's going to be the guy, you know, he mentioned, you know, Caden's getting that kind of lead from the staff and everything. One thing I wish we would have asked on that is who's getting that leadership. Like who's the, who are the guys following? Who's really leading the team? Um, I think that's one part of the aspect he, Coach Houston, we all know Coach Houston loves the leadership aspect of it. So I was kind of, I wish we asked or I asked myself, you know, who's who's the leader out of the two and the, the team is really following. Secondly, I think the tempo. The tempo thing was huge. Uh, I know the last year, is uh, a couple years at Holton, you know, you know better than we do as well, is the tempo just wasn't there. It wasn't exciting. So hearing that you know, there's a fast paced tempo, that they're going to play fast, you know, it really gets the defenses out of whack, which I'm excited about. You know, if we can move the ball, move at speed speed and get after it i think that's awesome and then lastly um i forgot my last but those are my t- my two points i took out of it um what do you think holt yeah i think the tempo is huge kind of like you said um my senior year you talked about like in the past my senior year i'm a huge tempo guy so like i really pushed donnie to be like a tempo offense and like my senior year, you saw that um we weren't as fast as what we're going to see this year because that's not like I like tempo, but I've never – I'm not a coach who's been through tempo offense with Lane Kiffin and these guys, but I just push tempo, get the play in, and let me do stuff at the line of scrimmage. So we saw that my senior year, not as fast, like I said, but we saw tempo. Um, whereas last year, I don't think Mason and Flynn really pushed tempo. That wasn't their thing. That wasn't their style. So Donnie did a good job of, like, doing whatever style the quarterback likes a little bit, especially with me because I was with him a few years. I had a good relationship with him. But I think this offense, and in college football, is huge is because tempo is so big because in college football, you're going to be facing fire zone blitz. And, Drew, you know all about this, Caden, you too. You're going to face fire zone exotic blitzes where some of them may not even – and be sound, but they're going to send a blitz here to cover two. This guy on the left is going to go play cover two way on the right and play the two high safety. And ECU does a lot of Coach Harrell. You can see it every game. Um, you probably saw some of it in the spring game. One thing that Tempo does is Tempo stops that. You can't, unless you're just picking out of a hat, I'll tell you how these blitzes do it, is they get the signal from the sideline from the offense. They usually try to steal the signal. Not saying mm-hmm. ECU does, I'm just saying a lot of these college footballs do, college, college football teams do. They see the personnel, 11, 12, 13. They see the formation, and they get a tendency off of that and then send a blitz off of that that beats that tendency. If you're going tempo, you don't have time to look at personnel. You don't have time to look at the opposing team signals. You don't have time to look at any formation because they're going so fast. So you're just having to call a generic defense. So ECU, in theory, should be facing a lot of generic defenses this year or I'll say what's going to happen is a, a coordinator is going to – Drew, you can talk a little bit more about this with Coach Harrell. Usually what coordinators do is have like a set blitz that they're going to call throughout the game or maybe this drive. They're going to be like, hey, this is the blitz we're going to call this drive. Be ready for it. But they're not going to be 
react they're not going to be reacting as fast it's going to be they're going to have a, have to have a set plan in place rather than seeing the personnel and playing the best defense versus that personnel versus that formation which is huge for a new coordinator a new offense and new quarterbacks yeah Drew? uh tempo uh as a defensive player is obviously a struggle um i feel like jack's spoken on it before uh when you're going against a tempo team like a few years ucf you have to alter your practice to prepare for that. I believe we probably did like an extra tempo period in team as well that week. And um, like defensively, like like you already said, you don't get the opportunity to sit and wait for the personnel to call that. Like there's a lot of base calls and um, like quick signals that Coach Harrell would call out just so he could get a playoff because, I mean, like they're moving fast. But to speak on our own defense – Tempo can also be a double-edged sword because what that equals a lot of times is turnovers and extra possessions. Now, granted, our defense did face a lot of games where they played a lot of possessions. I believe one game we punted 13 times and gave up 17 Ooh. points. That is an yeah. impressive stat defensively. So just to think about that, if they could somehow... Now, fans, like y'all have to realize that the defense is just as elite as what it was last year, but the stats might not show that. And that's because yep, 100%. Of, of, the, of the tempo. So what y'all just need to focus on is like Produ- gonna, winning, yeah, <laughs> win- winning because we might win a game 30 to 45 and you'll be like, dang, the defense gave up 30 points. Well, no, the defense balled out. I'm telling you. Yes. That's tempo. That's another thing I was going to talk about is the defensive numbers are going to drop no matter how talented we are because you got to think the faster the offense is going, the faster you're going to score for one and the faster you're going to punt for two. And I know that's a negative thing to say, but you're you're not going to have the ball long because you're trying to get it out fast, 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 fast. You're trying to score fast. But if you don't score fast, it means you're punting fast, which means the defense sits on the bench, has a swig of water, has no corrections, and is back on the field, whether you score or punt. So the defense is not going to have as many corrections on the sideline, which is usually huge for especially young kids in college football. We got a lot of guys returning, but still, and they're not going to have as much rest. They better we better have more depth than we've ever had the past couple of years. We better be better conditioned than we have the last couple of years. And if the games are close, that defense at the end of the game is going to be exhausted. The offense is going to be prepared because they're they're running that tempo every single day. Once you get to the season, the defense doesn't go against the offense like you do during camp and all that. The defense isn't going to be used to – yes, they're not going to be going against the tempo of the another offense, opposing offense. They're going to be going against the tempo of our own offense, and that is sitting on the bench for five minutes and getting on the field. That might sound like a lot of time. That is not a lot of time in college football. There's times when you're on the bench for 30 minutes during a drive with TV timeouts and everything like that. Caden, what are your thoughts on that? No, that's a good call out. You know, the, to play devil advocate here, you you kind of hit the the nail on the nail on the head with the tempo. Like if I think the biggest thing for this offense, and I think Shane kind of mentioned it after, maybe even during the interview. But um, you know, how well are they going to mesh? I know that's a big question. If the offense doesn't mesh, um, you know, you're going to have a lot of three and outs. Hopefully, we have the pieces. Hopefully, by the end of summer, you know, they're going to get there. They're going to start meshing. But there's some days, you know, you, there's some games you go out there. And the first half, or maybe in the first drives, there's just you're just not feeling it that day, or some even some days at practices, it just doesn't go your way. So when you have a tempo, you know it, you could easily turn the ball over there, and that that's the downfall of tempo. But if you're if you're clicking, that defense is in trouble. That opposing team is in trouble. And if we can have a defense, we don't need a great defense this year. We just need a solid defense, a consistently solid defense, not great, consistently solid. And I think we have a really good a really good team on our hands and. I think we got the right pieces. Now it's just making sure those pieces can gel. I think we got a lot of time till September or end of August when our first game is to really make sure, hey, the guys get to know each other, the quarterbacks feel the rhythm, whichever quarterback it might be. And I think we're in a really good spot this year. So, But what I and will we, throw in is this defense, this is like the best possible defense you can have to have a tempo offense. They experienced a lot of feelings like that a lot last year you know you just come off the field you've had a great defensive drive maybe you got an interception and three plays later you're right back up that is a yep. hard feeling but they've experienced it a lot and they're prepared i i agree with tempo. you i agree with you drew like you mentioned 
our offense, I don't know how many games. I'll have to look at it. But we were I don't think we were winning the time of possession. And we definitely weren't driving down the field. That defense was on the field a lot last year. And they did ball. So I'm excited. We're getting a lot of those key pieces back. And like I mentioned, they don't have to be great. They just got to be solid. And we got a lot of experience coming back. And I think we're in a really good setup, especially with this week's schedule. So I'm really excited for it. Yeah. I agree. I think it'll be a good season. We got to make sure the guys stay on the field. You know what? The best way to do that is for them to go to Worth Chiropractic. Call 1 800 Back Doc. Two convenient locations on Arlington Boulevard. They kept me on the field. They keep the Pirates on the field, and they will keep you throughout your daily life. Or just, hey, you need an adjustment. You need back to feeling you. 1 800 Back Doc. Worth Chiropractic. Two convenient locations on Arlington Boulevard. Boys, you know I got to talk about Southern Ease as well, our prime sponsor of the show. What are you waiting for? Experience the many wellness benefits of Southern Ease tasty hemp edibles by going to southernease.com. Use code Capital Pirate for 25% off. Shout out to those guys for sponsoring the show. Um, we will do shout outs on Twitter or on X at Whole Ailer Show. We'll be giving away some of their tasty hemp edibles on the show. And we're going to talk about giveaways. We're going to give away. Um, Madam Skeet Boost Club gear. We got some more gear coming in. Uh, so be on the lookout for that on our X. Hey, let's go right into NBA playoffs. I'm feeling good right now, everyone. Uh, the Knicks are up 2 0. Drew, I know you're going to have, uh, you know, some say about that, but I'm feeling good. I'm feeling good. We play Thursday night. So, uh, when this releases, so we're going to see how it goes. But, you know, I think the story, I want to get y'all's opinion on it. The story of this playoff is out with the old, in with the new. It seems like, these old players that we watch is kind of sad, man. Like Steph Curry, you know, they're, they're done. LeBron looks like he's, you know, losing KD losing. It looks like the new guys are stepping in, man. Where are we at right now with our, with our teams? You know, who do you think will be the next face of the NBA? You know, I just want to say it hurts me in this Timberwolves Suns series to see someone that I grew up thinking was one (laughs) of the greatest scorers of all time go into this playoff series and get absolutely cooked by Anthony Edwards on both sides of the ball. Uh, Like it it just makes me feel old that like the guys that grew up, like Kevin Durant was an MVP, but (laughs) it was 10 years ago. Like, ain't that crazy? Like that is crazy. Like the new emergence is happening right before our eyes. Like the passing of the torches within years, like even Steph Curry, as crazy as it sounds like, not to brag on the Knicks, but like Brunson is a better player than Steph Curry right now. Yes. And like it's crazy to say because Curry is one of the greatest point guards of all time, but you'd be crazy if you had to win a championship this year if you pick Curry over Brunson because that's yeah. how it's I mean, happening. I think, and you already mentioned his name, I think the new face of the NBA, I'm telling you, man, if he makes a run, it is Anthony Edwards. And people don't want to hear it. And Drew, you're probably going to say Wimby or this or Wimby that. I think if Anthony Edwards win, man, he plays like an old school player. These old timey guys who, you know, love LeBron and love all of these other guys. He plays like those old school guys, like a '90s type guy. You know, is he gonna be if he wins this series and somehow makes a run at it to beat Denver in the West? I think he's the face of the NBA next year, and I think they're the team to beat them in the West. Drew, how do you feel about that, Caden? How do you feel about that? You know, Denver. Obviously, that is. They're the best starting five in in the league, and I don't think that's to debate. And it starts with the big man down down low, Nikola Jokic. But I mean, you, you think how do you stop Nikola Jokic? How has it worked in the past? And it's big guys. And I know we've talked about it, Holton, but like two seven foot guys that you can throw on the court and flood Jokic, like put space all over the court. Like the Timberwolves and the Bucks are like the two like no homo like longest teams in the league. Like they got like a six nine small forward in Jaden McDaniels, a six seven shooting guard in Anthony Edwards, and like they just ball. They play great defense, and they are a, a team that's equipped to go against the Nuggets and do well. Yeah, I mean, I think like you said, and like the way Denver Denver's gonna lose is because the last time Denver lost in the playoffs really was to the Lakers. It's because they had two seven-footers that were hacking at him, making Jokic shoot over top. Look, he's not as athletic as all these other guys are. you got to have dudes. He's quick on his feet. He's going to get by you, and he's agile, but he's not more athletic. If you make him shoot over, he's not going to be as good. But he's also going to foul out if you only have one guy doing it. The Timberwolves have two guys in Carl Anthony Towns. 
and um, Rudy Gobert, which I'm, I tripped for a second about that. So they have dudes just to throw at them and make them shoot over that are athletic, strong, great defenders. Um, so I think you know that's a team. And then I'm telling you, dude, if the Timberwolves make it to the finals, I mean, excuse me, if Denver makes it to the finals and the Knicks make it to the finals, I think the Knicks are another team. You got Mitchell Robinson and um, Hartenstein that you can throw at them and then play great defense, big body dudes. So that's another team. I know I'm, they're my team, but I think they're another team that can beat Denver uh, if they get to the finals. Drew, I don't know if you answered this. Who's your next face of the NBA in the next year or so? Um, You know, I know people have kind of forgot about him since the Spurs aren't a top team right now, but Wimby is another possible guy that I can see taking over the league and being the face. I I practically know he'll take over the league just like on the court, but um, one thing that I think could hold him back from being the face of the NBA is he's not from the, this country. I feel like a lot of guys, <laughs> it sounds jacked up, but like it's a reality, like you know, he won't ever play, like, he won't be in the Team USA jersey, you know, like, guys want to, like, this is the, the American League, like, they, they want to root for guys that, you know, are from the country, like, it sounds me- messed up, but I think that would st- stop him from being the ultimate, like, top guy face of the NBA. Drew's America first basketball right there. Hell yeah, brother. <laughs> I'm curious, guys. I, I, I think me and Drew talked about this earlier. I don't know if you guys noticed this. Um, every team so far has been undefeated at home. Regardless of one game that happened last well, night. Two with the games. Mavericks. Two games. Pacers also beat the Bucks at home. You're right. You're yeah. right. So so two. So it's like a eight and 8-2 record home. So... Defending the home court is crucial in this playoff. So this next wave, when teams start to travel, to me, is, is going to tell a lot about the second round too. Because um, once you get deeper in the playoffs, I feel like you have to steal in away game at some point. Mm-hmm. Like no one goes just four and three throughout the whole series, winning every, every home game, every away. Like that just doesn't really happen. So I'm curious to see, you know, who's going to be the team that steps up. You know, who's going to sweep. Because sweeping right now with how deep the NBA is would be huge. That's a lot of rest that you can get. Do we see any sweeps or any teams that you feel like are gonna like? We see the Knicks here just went two and zero. We see yeah. we see Minnesota Boston, just went two and zero. Like we see Boston. Do you see any? Who are the sweeps for you guys? And then who also are gonna be the type competitive matchups in this first round for you guys? I um, think the sweeps. Or yeah, I think the sweeps. I'm look. I'm a Knicks fan. I think it's going to be a tough series. But Embiid has been playing on one leg. I think there's a chance Embiid doesn't play one of these games. And if it's the next one and we go up three zero, I could see that. Um, I think a Boston. Tough place. Philly's a it tough is a place tough to place. Play. I'm without Embiid though. They don't stand a chance. I'm just. Okay. Uh, I now if he plays, it's a, it's a tight series. I've said I've said Knicks in five this whole time, but they're going to be tight games the whole time. I think the only locked sweep in my eyes is Boston. I still think. Without Jimmy Butler, I mean, J- without Jimmy Butler's tough. So yeah, I think Boston. Um, another team that I think could sweep, and this doesn't really benefit them at all because they'll play Boston next round. But I, I see Cleveland sweeping. That was mine. The, yeah, that was mine. They can sweep the the Magic. I mean, the Magic. They can't shoot yet. You know, they're still kind of a young team. Uh, they only got one big, and well, they have two, but they're only putting one one on the court. And I found that strange because uh, they do have. Jonathan Isaac, who they're putting him at the five, and they're benching their center. He and just getting, got back, yeah. Yeah, and they're getting out rebounded like crazy. So I'm curious, like, what adjustment th- they'll make there. But it doesn't seem like they want to. But uh, and they just can't shoot threes. And Cleveland can. They got Mitchell. They got Struess. Like they got guys that can put the ball in the net. And uh, but I do also think this is future talk. But I believe the Magic will go get Clay Thompson in the offseason. You heard it here first. Whole, whole I think show. the Knicks. I think the Knicks got a chance of getting a man. I don't know. Clay Thompson got mega knees. He ain't. He ain't <laughs> doing anything in Orlando. Boys, uh, <laughs> right. well, that's good NBA talk. We'll, we'll have to keep the, the listeners updated. I want to give one more shout out, and that is to Wayne Hardy Law. Big Wayne has been in the community my whole life. Um, obviously, uh, a great company, a great lawyer in this community. Him and his whole team will treat you like family. Look, when you're picking a lawyer, you want someone that you know, someone that's gonna that you can trust, that's gonna do a good job. Wayne Hardy Law has a great name around here and has been doing business for a long time. 
Um, look, they're going to treat you like family. That's the Wayne Hardy different. It's called, it's a 1-800, call 1-800-INJURED. It's a great call, and they will get you right and treat you like family. Shout out to those guys for supporting the show. Boys, let's dive in, uh, or not really dive in. I mean, I think we all kind of agree that ECU only has one draftable guy this year, and he has a chance to get drafted. That's Julius Wood. So uh, we're going to try to get him on the show next week after the draft. The draft starts tonight, Thursday. Um, hope, Hopefully – he gets a call in the later rounds. I mean, I think ECU every year has a you know a guy or a few guys that are kind of on the bubble, and he's that guy this year. He's took some visits. He's took some top 30 visits, which is huge. So he's definitely going to be on the team by next week if we get him on the show. I'm going to text him right after this. But uh, how are we feeling about him? Do we think he's going to get drafted? And, uh, you know, what are we feeling about him? Uh, when I think of Julius Wood getting drafted, obviously it would be a later round pick. I mean, that's just how it is. I think he's a great player. I lived with him for a year. But um, I can also see him fitting into that Jaquan McMillan role yep. really a lot quicker than J-Mac did. No fault to J-Mac, but uh, J- J-Mac kind of set, set the tone for what ECU DBs can do. And I feel like it's – it wants to get replicated, and Julius Wood, I think, can do that nickel role at the NFL level. I know he can. I mean, I've seen NFL nickels, and he's is good. He's good enough to play and and actually play in the NFL. So I'm excited to see that. I hope he, you know, I'm sure he did great on this visit. He's a great teammate. Um, I think he gets drafted, boys. I think he goes seventh round. Um, which is people don't think that's big of a difference. That's like a hundred thousand dollars instant to your bank account difference. So uh, I'm, yeah, I'm going, hoping he gets the call. Getting drafted huge. You're kind of guaranteed at least a shot. And I think in the NFL, yes. like for example, you just want a freaking shot. So I think that's huge in going on drafted. Undrafted, you don't really get guaranteed that shot. So wish him the best of luck. I actually just saw the funniest thing that Holton that might get under your skin. I uh, know you're you're not a fan. But Patriots are now the betting favorite to draft J.J. McCarthy in the first round. I'll know. take Caden, I'm going to take back my words, actually, before he proves you. Now you're a J.J. I fan. The more I've, I, I think he is more NFL-ready than possibly anyone else in the draft. I think he is ready because of the offense he's played in. Um, I went back and looked at it. I, I think I hate it a little too much. I think he's going to be. He's going to probably play his first year. If he gets in a good situation – I can see him a, a Kirk Cousins type guy, maybe not that high ceiling, but he could be a guy that can come in and play. And if he's got a good team around him, he'll be successful. I will say that. So I, I have changed my opinion on that. Okay. I also want to throw some in there. Whoever gets drafted by the Patriots, I do not think starts week one. I think they go with Jacoby Brissett and maybe yeah, try. I could to, see that. I think Jacoby's Jordan, a good start well, too. Maybe not Jordan Love, not that long, but like the like the Mahomes Alex Smith route. Yeah, yeah, Alex Smith, Mahomes, that type of route. I, I don't think whoever the Patriots draft gets the right away. No, I, and I agree with that. And I think Jacoby is a good guy to kind of lead into that role. He kind of did that in Cleveland for a little bit, if I'm recalling correctly yeah. as well. Last thing about the draft that I wanted to call to you guys. Did you guys see the letter that Penix, Michael Penix Jr. is saying to people about how he's actually – people should – I and I, this is no quoting. This is me just trying to memorize off the top of my head. How he's been through the experience of injuries, and they know he knows that he can bounce back. And with other guys, you're not as certain they can bounce back. That is not a good selling pitch. Was that kind of how? If I could <laughs> summarize it, was that not it, Holton? It no, it was. And like, yeah, I mean, it doesn't look great, but like, in his position, he can't get he can't go and take those injuries away. So I see where he's coming from, if that makes sense. Like, yes, it's not a great selling point, but like his position is the best selling point. You know what I mean? Like, does that sure. make sense? Yeah. So I think that's where he's at. Well, I think he I think there's five quarterbacks in this draft that could play next year. Like I'm I'm very impressed with this quarterback draft. Um we'll see how it falls out obviously tonight. So uh we'll see, boys. That was a uh, I feel like that was uh I know I don't know if y'all have anything else. I thought that was a great episode. We we really got deep dive. It feels good to talk about football, dude. It's, it's hard sometimes in the spring. Feels good to talk about ball. Well, I think we can look forward to it. It's hard right now. We're gonna have to embrace baseball a little bit more. But what's really the summer, what's going to get us through the summer? MLB baseball, which I'm always happy to talk about. But we have the Olympics this year, and we have the – Will Team USA be able to win the gold for the 15th billionth time? So that would be a fun <laughs> thing to look at in basketball. France made it hard in 2020 on them. Yeah, yeah. but they're bringing a squad. USA is bringing the squad. So we have, we have basketball we to look forward to. And then, of course, when August comes, it's back to football. So we have, I think we have – 
the the baseball rut for us but i'm I'm looking so forward to getting back in the football and the swing of things so i'm excited for it but what i will say (laughs) france is a juggernaut too they'll have wimby and gobert out there that's that's hard i know that's why i said france and they're home yeah and there's no three second rule so they can just sit in the paint all day ah for sure hey like i said uh be on the lookout boys that was a fun episode so um, be on the lookout on our X for Madam Mesquite Goose Club. We have some stuff on the way. We're going to be giving it away. We're going to tell you to push to their social medias and to their website. Obviously, we've shown their gear. We're going to show more gear on our social media at Whole Ailer Show. You see their logo right there in the bottom uh, corner there. So check out Madam Mesquite Goose Club. We're going to have some sick stuff coming up on our social media. So, boys, great episode. We'll talk soon. All's always, go Pirates. See you next time. Yeet!